There are now gaming laptops available with two screens, but is this useful or is it just a silly gimmick? This is the ASUS Zephyrus Duo 15, a powerful gaming laptop with a unique design. Basically the way it works is when you open the lid, the bottom second screen folds up, and this gives you a better viewing angle. Windows just sees this as dual monitors, so you can move Windows easily between the two screens. There's installed software which helps make this easier. When you drag a window you can quickly move it to the opposite screen, or maximise it over both. The bottom touchscreen also has its own menu with further options. You can set app shortcuts, move windows around and more. There's a shortcut key above the touchpad to turn the second screen off should you prefer, and you also have the option of disabling the keyboard so that when you lean on it while drawing or writing on the bottom screen, it doesn't get in the way. Now ASUS have done two screen laptops in the past, like the ZenBook Pro Duo, but the second screen there didn't fold up and give you that better viewing angle, plus this one has more powerful specs. The screen up top is a 15.6 inch 1080p 300Hz 3ms G-Sync panel. It's got decent colour gamut, but the brightness was a bit lower than I'd like, not too bad though. Overall a decent panel for gaming. The bottom screen actually had better colour gamut and brightness. I got most use out of the second screen by using it to display more things such as chat or OBS. It was also quite useful editing videos in Adobe Premiere. You could stretch a game over both screens, but for most titles that's not too useful. It will depend on the specific game as to whether or not you're able to have separate windows outside of the main game screen. And ASUS are working with game developers to improve the support. But yeah, for example, say we open a game like PUBG on the top screen, we can't just drag the minimap down to the bottom because it's part of the same window in Windows. You'd have to drag the whole window to have it taking up both screens, and then it would just be stretched out in Windows. Weird. So support will really vary by game. If the game lets you have a separate window in Windows that you can put on the bottom screen, then that would be perfect. Air gets pulled in below the second screen, and ASUS are using liquid metal on the CPU, so despite the powerful specs inside, it doesn't run too hot. And this is all while offering some pretty impressive gaming performance. Having this second screen up the back does mean that the keyboard needs to be pushed right down to the front. Now I didn't have any problems with this, it just means that you have to push the laptop back a bit more on your desk so that your hands still sit in the right spot. And now this does mean that the screen is a bit further away from you than it would otherwise be. Needing to push it back a bit does result in it feeling a bit awkward sitting on your lap. It also results in the touchpad getting crammed right down the front corner, but yeah I'd be sticking to a mouse anyway for a gaming laptop. The keyboard itself was okay, but the function keys up the top unfortunately aren't fully illuminated. Otherwise it's got per key RGB backlighting. Overall build quality is good, it's all metal and feels quite solid. There was a little flex to the touchscreen in the centre, as the metal bars holding it up are out towards the edges. But I'm pushing far harder here than you ever normally would. Again, I thought it was quite solid all things considered. The port selection is pretty decent. On the left there's 3.5mm mic and headphone jacks towards the front and the power input, and despite its location it never felt in the way. The right has two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port with DisplayPort and Thunderbolt 3 support, and you can also optionally charge with Type-C. Over on the back there's a Gigabit Ethernet port, another USB Type-A port, and HDMI output. Underneath has the speakers towards the front. They sound okay, there's a little bass but they weren't that great. Otherwise there are air intake vents towards the back above the fans. Inside we've got the 90 watt hour battery down the bottom, 2 M.2 slots for storage, Wi-Fi is soldered to the board, and there's 16 gig of memory soldered to the board too with just a single stick. Mine does have a 16 gig stick installed, so in total there's 32 gig, and as long as you've got that single stick it does still run in dual channel, and you can optionally upgrade that stick to 32 gig for a total of 48 gig. Yeah it sucks that it's not fully upgradable, but for most people I still think that's going to be plenty. Of course in a laptop this expensive you do kinda wanna have those upgrade options. At least the memory speed is pretty fast, this is the first Intel 10th gen laptop I've tested that supports DDR4 3200 speeds. The battery life wasn't great despite the 90 watt hour battery, and that's simply owing to the higher powered specs and the two screens. ASUS let you toggle between Optimus or discrete graphics only, so that will affect battery life but does give you the option of improving gaming performance. Like the G14 and others from ASUS, there's no camera here. Although there's no camera, it does still have microphones, and this is what they sound like. So the Duo 15 looks quite interesting, performs pretty well, and doesn't get too hot. The downside is of course the price. You can check updated prices linked in the description, but at the time of recording, this model I've got here is $3600 US dollars. That is the highest spec option, and the lowest spec model with the 2070 starts at $3000 US dollars. So yeah, definitely not cheap. 
At the end of the day, I really think it's only going to be worthwhile for someone that's going to benefit from these two screens. Especially if you need them when on the go, like during travel, you know, once that's allowed again. You could of course get a cheaper laptop that will perform similarly and just connect an external monitor if you really need a multi-monitor setup. But that is going to be an extra thing that you need to take with you, so it just depends how much you really want it all built into one thing. If that extra screen real estate is important to you, then the Duo 15 could be worth considering despite the higher price. And yeah, once you get past that, almost everything else about this machine is quite impressive. It's got great performance, good thermals, battery life isn't that great, keyboard and touchpad take some getting used to, but the screen is pretty good in terms of response time, and it's great for gaming overall. If you want to see how well the ASUS Zephyrus Duo 15 performs in 21 different games at all setting levels, then you can check out my other video here. And I've also compared it against some other laptops so you can see how it stacks up. Otherwise, if you're new to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe.